So this is our third lecture in a series of lectures on SN2 reactions. So in this lecture we're going to focus on how the size and structure of our substrate affects the rate of our SN2 reaction. So let's begin by looking at the following prototypical example of an SN2 reaction. So in this reaction we have the nucleophile which has the lone pair of electrons. These lone pair of electrons attach this carbon atom on this substrate and this substrate also contains the leaving group. Now when this lone pair of electrons attacks and bonds to this carbon it displaces this pair of electrons along with our leaving group. So our leaving group gets kicked off and the nucleophile forms a bond with our carbon. So we have a Lewis base acid reaction. So these are our two products, our new substrate and our leaving group which was kicked off. Now notice we have two arrows, one going this way, one going backward. That means our SN2 reaction is reversible. So if we're going this way, this is acting as our Lewis base, our nucleophile, and if we're going backward, this is acting as the Lewis base, our nucleophile. So when we go in reverse, this lone pair of electrons attacks this Lewis acid, this carbon atom, displacing this leaving group, breaking this covalent bond. Now I want to examine the following idea, the following question. How does the substrate size and structure affect the rate of our SN2 reaction? So to examine that, let's replace all these R groups with H atoms. What happens? Well, when the R groups are small, such as when they're H atoms, they have small electron densities. In such a case, the lone pair of electrons on the nucleophile can approach the carbon atom with ease. So let's explain that. So each of these protons has one or each of these H atoms has one proton inside the nucleus. And our electron is orbiting our nucleus. So this electron creates an electron density around our nucleus, around our H atom. Now when these two electrons get close to these electrons, there's electrostatic repulsion between our electrons. Remember, negative charges repel and opposite charges attract. So, when these electrons get close to these electrons, they will repel one another. So, if these groups are large, there will be a lot of repulsion. But if these groups, if these electron densities are small, this nucleophile, these two electrons, will have no problem getting to this carbon atom and forming our bond, kicking off our leaving group. So, on the other hand, if all the R groups are large, as in this case, so now we replaced all these R groups with methyl groups, and notice how much more electron densities we have. We have nine in this case, and only three in this case. So, on the other hand, if all the R groups are large, the nucleophile cannot approach due to the electrostatic repulsion of electrons found on these uh, H atoms. The large R groups block the nucleophile from forming a bond with the carbon. So, if all these R groups are large, as in this case, our two, our two electrons on the nucleophile cannot get to this carbon because all these electrons found on these H atoms are blocking them due to electrostatic repulsion. So, we see that the smaller these groups are, the higher our reaction rate is. The larger these groups are, the lower our reaction rate is. If these groups are small, this will quickly be able to get to the carbon. If these are large, this will have to take its time. It will have to find a little hole here to get into the carbon. But in fact, tertiary compounds will not react via SN2 reaction. And we'll talk about that in a second. So notice as we go from methyl substrate to primary substrate to secondary substrate to tertiary substrate, our reaction rate decreases because our R groups increase. Tertiary simply means all our R groups 
are carbon-containing groups. They're methyl groups. Secondary means we have at least one H atom. Primary means we have two H atoms. And methyl means we have three H atoms, as in this case. So, if we have a methyl, our reaction B will be the quickest. Tertiary will not occur at all. Secondary will be slower than primary and methyl. Primary will be slower than methyl, but faster than secondary. So, once again, if we have a primary substrate, as we show here, the nucleophile will be able to get to this carbon. If we have a secondary and the R group is relatively small, this pair of electrons will be able to get to the carbon, but it will be slower than uh, in this case because this nucleophile will have to find the perfect route to get to the carbon. And finally, in our tertiary case, no matter how our nucleophile tries to get to that carbon atom, it will not be able to because there's too much electrostatic repulsion between the electrons on these R groups and the electrons on the nucleophile. So now let's quickly examine ring structures. So let's suppose we have the following pentane molecule and this carbon has our leaving group attached to the carbon. So our nucleophile will have to try to get to this carbon. And notice we have one H atom, so that means we're dealing with the secondary structure. So, technically, this pair of electrons should find a way to this carbon. But because of this ring structure, it will be relatively slow. Now, there are two reasons for that. The first reason is the reason we mentioned earlier. These two ring groups are sterically hindering. They have a lot of electrostatic repulsions, a lot of electrons orbiting that area. And when these two electrons attempt to get to this carbon, they will run into problems. They will run into electrostatic repulsion. The second problem lies in the transition state. In the transition state, recall that our carbon should be sp2 hybridized. And so our angle between the H, carbon, and carbon should be 120 degrees. But because this is a ring structure, this bond here, this angle, is fixed. In fact, in a pentagon, I think it should be around 108. So because this angle is smaller, the transition energy will be higher than normal. And so when our reactants try to go to products, they have to overcome a larger transition state than if they would, than if this ring structure was not here. So ring structures have two problems. A, they have large R groups which cause steric hindrance, which create electrostatic repulsion. And in the transition state, there is this angle difference. And so it raises our energy of transition state, destabilizing our intermediate, destabilizing our reaction. So once again, even though ring substrates do undergo SN2 reactions, there are two main problems. One, transition energy is too high, and two, the large ring groups are sterically hindering a lot of electrostatic repulsion. Now, what is our conclusion? What can we conclude about what we just spoke about? So, the larger the R groups on the substrate, the slower the SN2 reaction. As we go from our methyl substrate to our tertiary substrate, our rate decreases. And in fact, tertiary substrates do not undergo SN2 reactions at all.